welcome back to part two of Habit by Chase Bliss. If you haven't seen part one of this two-part video, I highly recommend that you uh, hit the link up above or in the description box down below to go check out part one of Habit by Chase Bliss. In that video, we're taking a look at Habit as a delay pedal first, getting comfortable with the level, repeats, size, and modify controls uh, before we jump into the crazier and more unpredictable side via the spread and scan controls. Uh, if you haven't checked it out, I recommend it. If you feel like you've already got a handle on that and you want to just dive into the deep end, welcome. This is the deep end. So in this video, we are talking about the spread and scan controls. The fundamental differences between the two are that scan operates purely in the three minute built in tape loop in the habit, whereas the spread can be thought of as essentially a second playhead in your delay pedal. Uh, what that means is at low settings and spread, you can essentially create multi-tap, really like short clustered moments of delay where you have them kind of like, where you have your two playback heads, one controlled by your size control and the other one controlled by that spread, which is affected by size. Uh, as like a multi-tap system, you can get jumbling, cascading uh, multi-tap repeats, or at higher levels, you can basically consistently hear your audio playing through a second playhead further down this imagined tape loop that we have running inside of here. The impact of scrubbing back and forth on that spread control also reacts differently than that scan control because you're, you're, sp you're scrolling through a smaller section of audio than you are with that scan control. And your scan control conversely operates, like I said, in that three minute tape loop space uh, more exclusively. Uh, there's a few other interesting behavioral changes between the two. Scan has a dip switch up top that either lets it run in automatic mode or manual mode. In automatic, the further up you turn that scan control, the further it kind of ventures into the past semi-randomly to grab snippets of audio and play it back for you. Uh, or manual mode where you can literally just turn that knob and set where you want it playing back from as that three minute tape loop plays in the background. Uh, very interesting. Uh, oh, and the third kind of differentiating factor between those two is that the scan control actually sits in between your input signal and the delay playback module within this thing, which means the more you turn up scan, the longer it's going to take for the delay line itself uh, to be impacted by your incoming signal. So with scan at zero, essentially off, uh, you get your delay immediately. With scan turned up just a little bit in manual mode, I should say, uh, you can almost think of it as a pre-delay to your delay line itself, but at higher values, you literally just won't hear your repeats until that recorded piece of audio internally in the pedal hits that playhead, which is really interesting and creates some very interesting accidental moments of chaos and very serendipitous, affected, cool things. So you can kind of play for a while, have your delay modifier set to be like an octave down in reverse, and you'll be able to get you know, 15 seconds, 30 seconds, two, three minutes before that sudden octave down reverse thing comes swelling back in of something you played a minute and a half ago. It's really interesting. This is a fun part of the video because this is where things get really kind of like strange and esoteric and you start to kind of like see what this thing really is and what sets it out as a device that isn't really similar to any other delay pedals or looping pedals I've ever interacted with. It's very uh, experimental. Uh, it can be predictable when you need it to be and it can be deeply unpredictable uh, under all other circumstances. Cover those two uh, knob controls in depth in this video and then we're gonna wrap this one up by taking everything we've learned between part one and part two and applying it into just one long ambient soundscaping kind of sound design exploratory mission. So uh, yeah, this is Habit by Chase Bliss and enjoy. So let's move beyond just the modified delay concepts in the Habit and let's go ahead and take a look at what makes this such an interesting, esoteric and creative pedal. Uh, we are talking about the built-in three minute memory that the Habit has and how it interacts with the spread and scan controls. As best as I have come to understand it, the fundamental difference between spread and scan, given that they both interact with that kind of three minute memory built into the habit, is that scan allows you to kind of scrub through the entirety of the memory and either semi-randomly, totally randomly, or very intentionally pull back specific moments of playing as you kind of like 
scrub through, whereas spread is more about creating an additional read head in your delay lines. Uh, at lower settings, basically between zero and about four, you are essentially creating a multi-tap delay. Um, like I said, you can you can think of the standard delay parameters up here, the top three uh, controls, as a single read and write heads on a single delay line. And the spread control basically offers a second read head creating multi-tap uh, repeats or at higher levels, uh, what the manual calls parallel moments, which can best be described as kind of like a multi-tap system if that second tap was like impossibly far away. You're basically creating a like longer tape loop or a secondary iteration of your tape loop, uh, I guess is the easiest way that I can think of um, explaining it. So let's start by looking into the spread control, what it does at low settings, what it does at high settings. And I think that will help you understand a little bit better what we're talking about. So we are running a standard delay right now, no modifiers, no spread, no scan. This is what that sounds like. So let's really use the space, as they say, uh, with this spread control and utilize that first section to create some like interesting rhythmic multi-tap settings. them even closer. It can really get very jumbly very quickly. It is worth noting, uh, this is a great opportunity to get a slightly more nuanced and intricate multi-tap delay setup by making the jump down here to feed, which basically feeds everything habit is doing back into the input. Uh, this will allow you to kind of like re-multi-tap and, uh, and get more added complexity and weirdness out of something like this, so. more clearly with the palm muted stuff, like a single note coming in. Uh, so here, let's do that. Uh, routing just to the output. You can hear that second delay line come in. And then you change it so it feeds back into itself. You kind of hear them accumulate as they go. opportunity to create some added complexity by introducing a modifier. There you go. Between feed and that multi-tap, let's take it just past noon so that instead of getting kind of like cluttered murkiness by slightly low, by, or sorry, by slightly high passing your repeats, feeding them back into themselves, Bring 
that repeat uh, the repeats down a little bit. Yeah, again, like we discussed earlier, it's important to keep those repeats uh, lower when you're feeding back into the input, with especially with those um, resonant filters, because those filters will kind of build up and create some some clipping eventually. Feed that tape machine back into itself with that dump with that multi tap. Okay, let's get back to no modifiers bring up that spread a little bit farther. So this is right as we start, this is right around the time that you start going from multi-taps and start getting into the parallel moments concept. So let's go just past that multi-tap space and more into a spot where you can hear kind of our delay line come back around a significant amount of time later. So we get up here. That, that, that stutteriness that's uh, moving where that second reed head is in the, in the memory. The farther out you get, the nice thing is uh, the spread control interacts directly with your repeats and your sides, whereas the scan does not. Uh, so if we bring up, let's go ahead and clear our memory really quick, set that spread a little bit higher so that we have to wait a little bit for things to come back around. But the nice thing is because it's tied into this tap tempo, Now, this is just spread working its way through things.
this is actually a really good time. As you noticed that uh, we kind of were playing over top of that spread m parallel moments thing. If you hit the dip switch on the top of this thing for collect, uh, you will actually enter into a version of that where that spread control is um, overdubbing as you play. So it will stay in kind of a closed loop of the existing audio, but add things on top of it. So as that as that long form internal memory plays, rather than dumping what's whatever is at the end of that three minutes off, it'll actually loop back around and allow you to kind of like overdub on top of it. So let's give that a listen. So as you can see, we are now kind of just like looping everything into itself as it goes, and we're building up and collecting more of that audio as we go. It's also worth noting while we're here in this mode, uh, there is a, uh, a dip switch called wipe on the top that will actually bypass your delay section up top and just give you access to your memory. So let's go ahead and try that out. And you can basically treat it as like a super long delay if you wanted. So we should now be past having the delay. So worth noting, your modifiers don't work in white mode. You are just getting access to that memory. So this would be like uh, peak Frippertronics, I guess, uh, aspects to this pedal. Um, you turn on, if you turn on your uh, memory control, or sorry, not your memory, your, uh, your collect and your wipe, you can use this as just a tape loop, essentially, and just kind of build layers on top of layers with, with the habit. So let's talk about the scan control. This is the thing that uh, I had the hardest time wrapping my head around until I really did some like heavy manual diving. So I'm hoping that I can kind of help uh, ease, ease some of that confusion and tension in your mind. Um, let's talk about scan. 
Uh, it has two basic functionalities. Again, this is uh, how you access the kind of like full three minute loop built into habits. Um, when it's off, you are just getting your delay as you play it. And as you increase it, uh, it does one of two things. There's two main functionalities for scan, automatic and manual mode. Uh, in automatic, scan when it's turned up past being off down here at minimum, uh, will kind of randomly find and bring to you chunks of your playing from the past, from the, the last three minutes of your playing, or if you're in collect mode and you're overdubbing forever, uh, anything you've played since the pedal's been on stacked in three minute intervals. The scan control in automatic mode will basically, uh, turning up the scan control in automatic mode will kind of help help inform how likely habit is to reach way back into the past and pull up playing from like, you know, two minutes ago, three minutes ago, or again, if you have got collect to turn on, things that you played 15 minutes ago uh, when your guitar was just sitting there and your but, 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 but the pedal was active. The other mode is manual. This is controlled via a dip switch on top. In manual mode, turning that scan control sets how far back into the past you are playing. And as that three minute loop kind of marches along, you are getting a consistent playback from that section of your memory. So let's start things off with the scan turned off. We'll play a little bit. We'll have repeats turned nice and high so that we're getting a lot of information saved into the loop as well. Uh, and then we'll bring up scan just a little bit so you can hear it kind of picking stuff that we've recently played. And then we'll turn it way up and you can start hearing things pulled way from the past. Scan control a little bit farther. And so what's really interesting is when scans doing that random, random searching thing, if we bring in that spread for parallel moments, we will get a consistent response uh, from just a short while ago. We have our, we have our real delay, our uh, kind of parallel moments delay, and then randomly accessing anything we've played for the last couple of minutes. Actually, just to kind of put a nice clean bow on this, let's go ahead and turn on the generation loss uh, so that you can hear 
the difference between the new guitar input and all the clean stuff we've been playing. So let's talk about Scan's manual mode. We went ahead and we flipped the dip switch up top to be in manual so that when you turn the scan control, rather than increasing the likelihood of the scan grabbing something from different parts of the memory, you are now manually sorting through the memory. So let's go ahead and start playing and then start kind of scrubbing through scan. We're gonna put in some, some playing, we're gonna max out the repeats, and then we're gonna scan to listen to things kind of build up and get a little weird. Uh, the reason for that is the internal signal flow of your guitar is going to be input, memory, then off to your uh, delay repeats. So the further up you turn scan, the more delay you're going to get before you actually hear your repeats. That'll make sense in just a second. Uh, we'll kind of like treat it like as a pre-delay at super low settings, and then we'll go up higher than that. So here's like basic, basic delay functionality. As we turn up that scan a little bit, Rather than just increasing the amount of delay in your delay, you're able to also, if you go further back, you'll find old pieces of playing. go back farther, catch some of that early playing again. And like we said earlier, this is a three minute loop. So the further back you get in this scan, the farther ahead of yourself you're going to be. So if you haven't been playing for more than a couple of minutes, when you max out that scan, you're gonna get nothing for a while. Catch that that we just played. And so like we said there, uh, you're not hearing any delay right now because we're like two and a half minutes away from our input signal hitting the moment in scan that sends to that delay line. But you know, if we bring it way back down here again,
So let's turn that reverse back off. Uh, let's do something interesting here. Let's go ahead and take our expression pedal, plug it back in and assign it to that scan knob so that we can kind of like randomly sweep through while playing and find old moments. So we have our, our expression pedal engaged, so you'll be able to hear. We, uh, we just ran away from, uh, from where we were at. We sweep through. Like we said earlier, when you're sweeping through, it sounds kind of like cloudy, but if we stop where we found some audio, we'll get playback. Let's put on... Let's shift down those repeats when they come back around. Minimize out our scan. So yeah, that's expression ramping uh, or expression pedal control over that scan. You can also use the dip switches on top to do that kind of scanning as more of a ramping system. You can also set it to be automatic uh, in either a sine wave or a square wave fashion, which is really cool. The square wave is super interesting because it allows you to grab moments without that scanning sound as you, uh, that kind of stuttering scanning sound. So let's go ahead and engage that actually. We'll turn off our repeats or our, uh, our modifier so that you can hear the clean repeats as they come back. So we set the uh, the ramp control up here to be uh, to, to to change the the area that we're ramping in really quickly which is why you're just getting little snippets as we roll through. Let's add a little bit more uh, guitar in as, uh, into what we're playing and then reduce that so we get longer moments from that scan. Now we'll get longer pieces of that of that playback. Thank you. 
missing just a little bit of that, that really nice warm tape degradation sound. best way to demonstrate the full kind of breadth of what habit is capable of is by using it basically as it was intended according to kind of like some of the stuff that Nobbs and the guys at Chase Bliss have said, which is uh, habit kind of excels as a serendipitous accidental song creator. Uh, it's a bunch of chance encounters that make for something really cool. I think the best way to exemplify that is to kind of go full deep end with habit uh, and by that, I mean, we have set the uh, the routing to be uh, the feed mode, which is basically the kind of closed loop thing. Uh, everything we do, any changes we make to the knobs, all feed back into the input. We're going to start off with a basic uh, delay. We are then going to bring in the scan so that things can start to kind of build on top of themselves. And then we'll kind of bring in the spread as well. We'll kind of find some sweet spots for everything. But we're really just going to let this kind of bloom and grow into just kind of an interesting ambient song. We might bring in the polymoon for some width. We've got the flint turned on. Uh, what I know we'll do is we've, we've, we've swapped out the uh, generation loss for the quiet theory prelude, which is this incredible two in one delay and reverb in front of habit. And the reason for that is because habit itself is functioning as this kind of memory machine. I want to be able to make changes to some time-based stuff out in front so you can hear the different layers coming back rather than just having the Flint print a uh, plate reverb on top of everything and having that be all of our additional wet stuff. But uh, having something in front really gives you a better sense of where we are in the scan and in the spread in terms of memory. Uh, you'll hear different tonality building on top of itself, which I think is really cool. So let's turn on habit and let's, uh, let's just start kind of writing, writing a song. We'll start off with the uh, quiet theory turned off. Um, no modifiers, just, just a nice, slow, nice, slow delay. Thank you. 